They might as well put right. 136 right there on the plaque that's on the table. This, by the way, is the poker simple drug of choice. Uh, so, let's talk straddles. Straddles. Yeah. It's popular, right? I mean, and I, I feel like I'm seeing it more. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. from playing more in California now that I'm back here. I don't know. But they're, they are a mm -hmm. popular thing. In Vegas, too. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that a lot of people don't play straddles correctly. And so here's a chance to talk about them. Let's say you're playing in a 1-3 or a 2-3 game. So the big blind is $3, right? Okay. And so somebody puts out an under the gun $6 straddle. You're now playing a one, three, six dollar no limit hold'em game. Right. They might as well put that on the sign. Exactly. They might as well put right. one, three, six right there on the plaque that's on the table, which means that the big blind is now $6. And all the calculations that you make about your raise sizes mm -hmm. and stack sizes and all that stuff are now based on six dollars so you're saying that that's one of the mistakes people make is just failing to conceptualize the game as being a three six game exactly there's two key components to that okay one is is that your opening raises should be sized to this new big blind at six dollars rather than three dollars so let's say you've been opening to 12 to 15 dollars in a one three game. in a one three right. game like 5x 6x four to four to six x right. okay on the circumstances uh -huh. you need to open to four to six x times the six dollars that means a 24 to 36 dollar range mm -hmm. which is feels really drastic because you're right. like wait i thought we were playing a one three game but doesn't the stack size kind of come in from the other side. So the correct play would be 35 based on that. Mm -hmm. But what if the stack sizes are only 150? I'm glad you brought that up <laughs> <laughs> because that is the other thing that people oh, okay. don't realize. Right. Because let's say that we are playing a 1-3 game and there's a couple of three players at the table that have $150 stacks. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly we're playing a 1-3-6 game. Those $150 stacks are 25 big blinds, yeah. which is very short uh -huh. for live cash games. Right. I think what you're saying is the straddle alone, because of the effect on stack sizes by cutting them in half basically, should affect your preflop hand selection. It has to. Let's say that you have <clears throat> pocket sevens and somebody opens to $25 on that $6 straddle, right? right? Well, if he's only got $175 in front of him, you're not getting the price uh -huh. to set mine right. with your pocket sevens. Yeah. Whereas if it were a $3 big blind and he made it $12, you're probably perfectly happy to go ahead and set mine with your sevens. Another possible outcome of these shorter stacks is, is that you might decide to just get it all in in a situation where you really couldn't do that. Let's say, for instance, it's a 1-3 it's a game and you get pocket tens. If you were to raise and get three bet, you would maybe consider folding or calling and flopping a set. But now let's assume that there's a straddle to $6 uh -huh. and you open your pocket tens to 25 and a three better makes it 70, and he's only on 150 to start with, or mm -hmm. 175 to start with, you might just say, that's only 25 or 30 big blinds. My tens are crushing ace queen and ace king. I bet it all. Right. Let's just bomb it in there and see who right. wins. Right, whereas if it had been a non-straddled pot, mm -hmm. you would either just call, you'd probably just call plan to flop a set. Or, right. You know, so here's, a, a here's another case where the straddle makes a huge difference between calling or shoving. Right. I mean, that's a pretty big difference. <laughs> yeah, you know, big there's difference. not many more bigger ones. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Most of your opponents are not going to understand this giant shift uh -huh. in the game dynamic. 
right. that comes from the straddle. And you're now playing a 1-3-6 game against people that are fundamentally 1-3 players. Yeah. So yeah. you've doubled the stakes. The competition hasn't gotten any better. Right. And you understand the game dynamics right. better than they do. Right. It sounds That's like a, poker it's all good. to me. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of look at it as like um, when the straddle goes on, my stack just got cut in half. That's another way of looking at it, right? Everybody's stack just got cut in half. All your ratios, mm -hmm. any, any thinking and any strategizing you do based on pot size, stack size, and ratios has been blown out of the water, basically. Right. It's another game. And one thing that I really encourage you to do is, when the straddle goes on, look around. Look around the stacks and say, okay, these stacks all got cut in half. Mm -hmm. What's, what are our new situations, yeah. right? Is somebody going to have an, a stack that they can easily shove here? Do I have a stack that I can easily shove? Another thing that you see happen when straddles go on is the table often gets really passive. At a table where you've been seeing the normal raises and stuff going on, mm -hmm. you see five people limping into the flop probably because it's putting people out of their comfort zone. However you look at it, straddles are there so that an individual in a moment of craving more action has that option right. to generate more action. So at the root of straddles is the idea of more excitement, right. more, more energy, more gamble enthusiasm. And so maybe the limping is just part of that. It's like, hey, I don't want to miss out on this potential big straddle pop. I used to actually be the guy. Now, this is back when the only straddles allowed were under the gun, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, the possibly the worst decision you could make if you were playing for a living, right? To just voluntarily put in extra money out of position right. with an unseen hand, right? right? But people do it all the time. Right. But back in the old days, we were playing limit. People would say, okay, let's straddle for a whole round, or, mm -hmm. you know, and I would be, I would be that asshole that said, <laughs> nope, you guys can do it. I'm not going to do it. Not anymore, though. Now I'm like, anytime no anybody's like, it. if they all want to do it, let's all do it. Anytime you have a bunch of people wanting to straddle, that generally means they also want to play bad. So it really just comes down to recognizing the change in relative stack size by exactly. the straddle and then looking at the stacks and thinking in terms of, okay, this is how many bets we now have. When the straddle goes on, everything changes. Okay.